Perfect. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, Vince Burke with another Crypto Convos for you. Today we have Petro Morale from Warpcom. He's the CEO there, and Warpcom is, a, is our Iberian partner. Um, Pedro, welcome. Would you give a brief overview of yourself, your role, Warpcom? Um, just an introduction for the for the listeners. Yes, sure. Thank you, Vince. Okay, and then thanks again for the invitation. Okay, so so as you said, my name is Pedro Moran. I am the uh, the CEO of of Warpcom Services, and being in this role for um, one and a half years, more or less. Okay, I was I was formerly the sales director of the company. Uh, I, I have technical background, okay, I have a university degree in electronics and telecoms engineering. Uh, I have started working on software development. Uh, uh, I have done a lot of international tech support, uh, uh, pre-sales, marketing, and before moving to sales, okay? So I would say it's, it's more a uh, technical to sales and business uh, movement, okay? Um, Regarding Warpcom, um, we are a solutions integrator in, in the Iberian market, okay? So we deliver services and solutions around four business areas, okay? Which, which we call business units. So it's networking infrastructure, um, digital experience that includes collaboration and contact center area, okay? A third one, it's data center and cloud. Uh, and last but not the least, uh, it's cybersecurity, okay? So uh, all of them are, are relevant. Um, there, there are two where we came from, so it's, it's the historical part of Warcom is the network infrastructure and the digital experience. And the two fastest growing, uh, fastest growing uh, business units uh, are uh, data center and cloud and cybersecurity, of course, okay? So uh, that, the, the last one is, is the one we are putting more effort and, and investment, okay? Uh, our services, just to conclude, our services uh, offer include consulting services, integration services, managed services, of course, uh, and all, all of these transversal to these business units, okay? So basically, that's what we do. Yeah, and I think in today's world, you really can't be um, a provider of, of cloud or managed services without also doing the cybersecurity portion of it. I'm not, I'm not surprised in today's world that that's also your fastest growing, e growing area. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I actually, I mean, you know, one, one way to look at it, if I, if I think about cybersecurity, right, like it's a little bit, uh, you know, nobody builds a house without figuring out where the door locks are. Nobody builds a car without building, right? Like, you know, cybersecurity is sort of like part and parcel um, of, of building, building technology and infrastructure. So, so let me ask you, let me ask you a question because uh, Warpcom has been a leader in the quantum safe communication space. Also, you know, you're a leading provider of, of SD-WAN technologies, cloud services, right? And you were one of the first movers on that. Now, how important is it to you, right? Because that's a, that's, a, that's a deliberate decision by Warpcom to be sort of out there and be like an innovation leader with, with, um, uh, with these technologies for your customers. Is that, how important is that to you and your customers? Well, this is really important, okay? As I used to say, uh, innovation is in, you know, is, is in our DNA, okay? As we consider this fundamental uh, for our future growth, okay? So uh, typically I use, uh, you know, run the business, transform the business. So we run the business through the, the basics that we deliver for quite a while and try to transform it and, and, and help our customers to transform through innovation, okay? So uh, just to give you uh, some examples, um, we have started a few years ago the SDN stream, as you, as you name it, okay? The Software Defined Networking Stream. Not only the uh, SD1 part, but uh, the uh, SD data center, the, the access slash campus to the wide area, okay? So the, 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 full, the full stack, the full concept, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. And we have, we have a specific team in place, uh, partnerships aligned, uh, a well-defined go-to-market, a lot of references. So we are pretty much comfortable uh, in this space, but we have started uh, when uh, perhaps uh, not too many people have started that time uh, working on this on these area. Then uh, we have started looking at, to give another um, uh, example that is, uh, is common to us, 
is we have started looking to the quantum area, okay? Speci mm -hmm. Especially uh, or specifically the cyber perspective, okay, of it. Uh, to cope with the, with the rising of quantum computing and its massive processing capacity, okay? So um, not specifically the quantum compu co computing, but the impact that quantum computing uh, will have and is already having uh, in, the, yeah. in the cybersecurity, okay? And we have also other areas, but uh, uh, quantum, I would say, is right now uh, one of the... Uh, I would say flagships of our uh, innovation um, incubator, if you can say it. Okay. Yeah, it's, it shows that Warpcom is a leader in the space, mostly because, right? Like, if we if we think about new technologies and the adoption of new technologies, right? Like, if we, you know, by now everybody can install their operating system, but if we look, right? Like, which is something that was, of course, a novelty many many years ago, right? Like, as it comes to new technologies, people start looking at service providers, you know, the ones that are at the bleeding edge of that, right? And and the reason that these technologies are bleeding edge is because it gives a business advantage, right? So it stands to reason you you would focus there with um, with Warpcom. So um, right. let me, yeah, let me let me move into sort of the the area sort of like with regards to the market because you've you've been a sales leader, you're a technologist, so you understand these these you know, these motions go hand in hand. Um, you know, cloud, you know, connectivity technology in general. Um, managed data center services, right? This has been this has been a big uh, motion, right? Like you know, everybody's like sort of rushed to the cloud. We've seen adoption of infrastructure as a service. We've seen adoption of of, of true SaaS services, um, and now we are seeing a lot of companies that that have still have legacy technologies also making that move to the cloud. We also see some hesitation um, there, right? Like in terms of okay, it might be more expensive. It turns out it's not as much, you know. Um, do you, from a market perspective, think that this this migration to cloud services is is slowing down? Do you think the market's saturated, or you know, is there still quite a lot of acceleration to come? And this is different for the world as it is for the Iberian Peninsula. What, what's your thoughts? Uh, well, uh, I would say the, the market is not, or cloud adoption is not slowing down at all. Okay, yeah. uh, for us, it is a major trend. Uh, and I, yeah, I'd say for Europe, it's still a major trend, um, uh, fueled by the need to accelerate the time to market of our organizations, the agility and flexibility introduced uh, by the consumption models. Um, of course, this migration is, dicta is dictated by the applications and workloads because not all of them can easily migrate, okay? Namely, and you, you name it, uh, right. some legacy applications you cannot move. So we are rather seeing an, an hybrid model consolidating in a multi-cloud environment, okay? So uh, meaning our customers, they, they, they are having and will have more and more workloads in the cloud. Some of them will remain on-prem, okay? Uh, and Regarding cloud, we uh, we are seeing this multi-cloud environment, and you need to properly orchestrate this uh, this full picture. Okay, um, but uh, we are seeing in 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 Iberia, also in Europe, uh, uh, we are seeing strong growth. Also, there's a lot of investment. Just to give you some uh, some examples, uh, there's a lot of uh, of movement to build. Uh, regional data centers, okay, um, in, in in Portugal, in Sinish, so which which is in the in the west coast, uh, it's being built uh, a major data center, be uh, the, the biggest in Europe, uh, to uh, um, to host hyperscalers, okay, and deliver uh, services worldwide. Uh, taking advantage on the you know submarine cables that coming from North America, South uh, South America, Africa uh, into Europe, um, so it, it will be a huge. Uh, it, it, they are already our customers, okay, and it, it will be a, a massive investment. Also, uh, Madrid area, they they have a plan because I was two weeks ago with. Uh, with, uh, with the uh, responsible, the executives of the uh, Madrid municipality. Uh, they want, they have, just for you to know, they have right now 100 megawatts capacity available in Madrid area. They want to uh, multiply by five to have 500 megawatts uh, in, within five years, okay? So they, they want to be 
the, uh, the, uh, the region in Europe uh, with more uh, data center capacity uh, available. Okay, so there's a lot of, of demand, there's a lot of investment, um, and uh, also all the hyperscalers, they are, they are growing double digit, okay? So every talks I have uh, with, with the executives, uh, they told me that. So for the time being, no slowdown is expected, okay? No, that's, I mean, that's, that's good good to hear i think there's there's certainly um a lot to be said because essentially right like you you get that kind of capacity there's also a economy of scale there right like if everybody built their own data center there's an enormous amount of power and and servers and lost capacity there as well right so consolidation yes. in the cloud right is certainly actually it sounds like a lot of megawatts but in fact you, you know you're saving megawatts elsewhere in um uh, in the infrastructure so has this, you know, this move to the cloud, right? Has, what what kind of effect has that had on your ability to to perform cybersecurity services? Does it make it made it easier? Does it make it harder to secure your customers? Um, you know, uh, how has that had an impact? Yeah. yeah, no, no. Of course, it makes it. Uh, I would say challenger or uh, challenging. Okay, uh, uh, perhaps more difficult, but but, but challenging, of course. So uh, this move to cloud and these uh, uh, enterprise borders blurring uh, introduced right. additional security challenges. Okay, that, that's clear. Okay, the employees are increasingly mobile. They want to access all the relevant information uh, and enterprise applications anywhere from the, their device of choice. Um, yeah. uh, also, most of the uh, existing applications are moving to cloud. Uh, uh, also, the new ones are cloud native. So, so we, we need to act more and more securing the, the, the endpoint and securing cloud apps. Okay. Uh, this complementing the traditional, you know, uh, perimeter firewalls and uh, uh, their monolithic uh, protection that we were used to uh, a few years ago. Um, we, we uh, in our go to market, and just because the market demands it and our customers demand it, uh, we have a specific framework when, when helping customers in this migration to cloud. We have a specific framework. We call it route to cloud. Uh, not too innovative, but anyhow. Um, and uh, this one, um, that specific framework. Um, and regardless of the uh, maturity level of each customer, because uh, each customer is in its own, uh, you know, milestone in the in the, in the trip to cloud, um, and security is an, an inherent component. Okay, so yeah. security is embedded on that. So everything we try to, uh, everything we design, the architecture, uh, all the all the guidance that we bring to the customers they have the security embedded, okay? So it's, it's something that is uh, uh, inherent to our uh, daily action, I would say, okay? Yeah, and I think that, that uh, like we said in the beginning, there's no way to do one without, without doing the other. It's interesting to hear, hear you talk about sort of the challenges of the work from anywhere, right? Like it is um, the perimeter that we used to defend has evaporated and now it's exactly. the responsibility, right? And, and it does make it, make it harder also shifting the right a lot of the focus on identity and access control um if you don't mind i'd like to switch to because to, the reason we 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 work together with warpcom is is because on you know the quantum quantum safety aspect quantum safe uh, cryptography i want to talk about quantum computing in general just briefly um you know this is a, a new technology an up-and-coming technology we've seen some industries where the quantum computer even the small quantum computers that are being built today are already having an enormous impact on on optimization problems we see the quantum computer getting more powerful um all the time um how have you know how do you talk to your customers about quantum computation you know what is their level of comfort or knowledge about it what kind of questions do they ask um you know, do they see it as an enabler? Do they see it as a threat? Like what, um, you know, what is that? What's the customer uh, um, yeah. a reaction to it? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's a good question. Uh, so uh, in, in my daily talks with, with customers, um, what I figure out is that they, they understand quantum computing, okay? And it's a future relevance to their business and society in general. So that's, uh, uh, that's perfectly, uh, I would say, clear. Okay, that's that's yeah. assumed. Okay, 
uh, also the market uh, is moving in this uh, in this direction. Okay, just to give you another uh, example, a local example, um, in Spain, uh, the government is leading a plan to implement and deliver quantum computing to institutions. So the government is investing um, to make. Uh, quantum computing available to uh, you know universities, research centers in the in the first uh, in the first approach, uh, government entities, um, and this will be made available this year in, to, in 2023. Okay, so uh, there's a lot of uh, awareness around this. Okay, so quantum computing is well understood. Um, of course, we might discuss the availability uh, time frame. Um, but it's indisputable that society will largely benefit from it, okay? And you know, right. it, okay, it's accelerating product development, uh, you know, new new drugs, uh, faster molecules, identification for new medicines, etc. Okay, energy so materials, it, yeah, yeah, energy yeah. materials, of course. Okay, it will accelerate as well AI development. Okay. Uh, and the technology is there, okay? So you, you see announcements mm -hmm. from, you know, IBM, Google, uh, Microsoft, uh, Qubits, uh, uh, Osprey quantum computer has been announced uh, late last year. So, uh, and some others will be, uh, will be announced soon. Also, in a recent talk I had with, with uh, uh, Amazon Web Services, they, they, are, they are working on, uh, on quantum computing capacity made generally available from the cloud, okay? So that's something that will come up uh, uh, in the coming, I would say, quarters or, or semesters, okay? So it's definitely, quantum computing is definitely an enabler for future growth, okay? And what about, what about quantum? quantum safe communications, quantum, um, uh, you know, like in the same, like in the next five years, right? Like what are the major challenges in adoption of, right? Cause the, the power of the quantum computer, especially like the cloud quantum computer is, is like, look, you know, I capture your traffic. I can go and decrypt it on a cloud quantum computer and then be done. I don't even need to own the machine. Um, okay. If I want the traffic bad enough, that might just be worth it to me. So, you know, quantum safe, communication is coming, needs to come. Um, you know, what do you sort of see that journey like in the next couple of years? Is that just part of a service offering that, that people just sort of expect it to be there? Or do you see real challenges to adoption? What's your thoughts? Um, well, yes, okay. And that, that, that's why we have moved to this field. It was exactly to, uh, to enter the quantum safe uh, communications uh, space, okay? And, uh, uh, quantum safe uh, um, security, I would say. Um, it, that was exactly because of the, these, uh, um, the, the quantum computing uh, uh, potential and also the, uh, the challenges that it, it poses, okay? And the threats that it poses. Um, in Europe, there is a strong commitment um, to, uh, to invest in this area, okay? So uh, European Union is, is, is fully committed on the, on, on the uh, implementation and development of the, uh, uh, that we can call the, uh, the future quantum internet, okay? So this is, this is being, uh, uh, this is a, 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 a really, a really a key point um, for, for, for Europe and I guess for also for the, the United States and also uh, for, for other countries in, uh, in Asia. Um, so uh, there, are, there are programs too uh, where there, there, are, there is uh, public money available to invest. For instance, the Euro QCI, QCI uh, Quantum Communications yep. Infrastructure Program, um, which is the embryonic part of the future quantum internet. Um, is already uh, ongoing. Uh, each country within Europe has launched their own uh, subcomponent of Euro QCI. For instance, we are in the consortium uh, launched by the, the, the Portuguese government. So the Portuguese side, PT QCI, uh, has just been signed in last January, um, where uh, this consortium or in each country will work on the design and first trials of the, uh, in our case, the Iberian implementation 
uh, of the, the future quantum internet. We are talking about the connectivity through uh, fiber optics, uh, satellite connections as well. Um, and the objective is to have by 2027, the major European cities uh, covered, okay? So um, sure, yeah. there's a lot of things uh, going on. Um, more and more, uh, there is awareness uh, regarding this topic. Um, and we are seeing uh, an increasing adoption by government entities and critical infrastructures. Okay, so, uh, you know, utilities, banking, finance, uh, uh, telcos, uh, we are seeing all that. Okay. And those um, are key industries you think on, on that, that'll sort of carry that momentum into the future. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, regarding, regarding the, the challenges, as, as, you, as you asked, well, you know, the, the physical distance issues, okay, we, we had the, those uh, at the beginning because when we started uh, working in this field, uh, we work on the QKD area, quantum key distribution, you know, uh, th there's where we have started. Uh, but that, uh, well, we had uh, we, we uh, limitations on physical distance. And the that fiber, yeah. have a lot of constraints on uh, on uh, implementations and uh, on the, the different use cases. Okay, so th that was the, the first the first impact. Um, but we are seeing already, as I explained before, um, the uh, satellite communications technology. Uh, we are starting to work on that uh, on that side, and uh, a lot of uh, knowledge has been developed so far. So this will be eliminated uh, quite soon. Uh, and also, uh, and that's the area where uh, you uh, quantum exchange are, are working, um, is the uh, PQC, okay? The post-quantum cryptography, the crypto agility, you know? So that part is already uh, helping us to, to develop different use cases to help our customers to move faster, okay? And that uh, uh, um, uh, a reduced cost, okay? Or uh, at, at uh, I would say, uh, um, a more adequate cost to, to start preparing their infrastructures for the uh, quantum safe area, okay? Um, we still have the, the awareness part to, uh, that needs to, a lot to be done, okay? Because as I told you before, if quantum computing, when, when you start talks with your customers, for them, it's okay, okay, we understand it, and the benefits and threats, blah, blah. But the, um, when, when regards to the quantum, uh, to the quantum uh, safe uh, communications, uh, that uh, needs much more uh, involvement, much more uh, explanations. That's why we are pushing, for instance, the implementation of uh, proof of concepts, pushing that on customers for them to, to, to test uh, in, in, in concrete uh, areas, the specific use cases, um, customer events, etc. So that uh, we need to do, we together, okay, uh, the different stakeholders in this need to do uh, extra effort to, uh, to bring the, mes the message to the market. Yeah, no, and I think, I think the reason it's, it's more complicated like that and why there's so much more learning to be done is because, right, if you look at cryptography in the old days, well, we had RSA and Diffie-Hellman and that was the algorithm, right? That, that was the technique for, for, for encrypting. If we look sort of into the quantum future, well, there's going to be a slew of different technologies, right? Like, you know, you've, you've mentioned, you know, uh, QKD, you've mentioned uh, PQCs. We've seen 84 different algorithms be submitted, right? And evaluated by NIST for inclusion in the PQC, right? So the management of cryptography and the different aspects of it and the different techniques used for it um, is going to, in, at least in my opinion, going to become a major factor going forward in the, um, into the next sort of decade, if you, um, if you will. So this, awareness problem right needs to be it's going to take some time to be addressed realize yeah it. yeah exactly right and that's you know you play a critical role there so uh, maybe you we can switch because i'm a i'm a originally i'm a cybersecurity guy I, I'd, I'd be interested in sort of seeing what you're hearing like what are you know for your customers what are like the top three cybersecurity concerns what are they pushing you towards uh, well, um, I, I would say uh, the first one is, is, is awareness, okay? Once again, yeah. awareness, but more in the sense of employee awareness 
uh, and behavior. Okay, so don't click on the link. Top of awareness. mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's top of mind. Okay, so uh, people are the weakest factor. Okay, so uh, as you know. Uh, so they need to be constantly informed and trained uh, regarding behavior best practices. So this is uh, an ongoing task and is, is top of mind. Then I would say consolidation, okay? Consolidation, because cybersecurity space is very fragmented, okay? As you know, so with a lot of players delivering specific applications, solutions, okay? Uh, point solutions typically. So customers need to simplify and consolidate in order to reduce costs and improve agility, okay? So that's, that's a major concern uh, around, around customers as, as well. Uh, a third one I would say is uh, roadmap. Roadmap meaning that they, they, they need or they want to evaluate their maturity level regarding cybersecurity and define a clear roadmap of architecture improvement, solution implementation, uh, with concrete milestones and timings, okay? Um, I, would, I would add a, a, last, a last topic that uh, they should, and they are willing more and more to, uh, to, to, to choose a partner that can deliver managed security services end-to-end, -end, you know, from the data center to cloud, uh, including the endpoint, okay? With this, all the, uh, you know, the uh, enterprise, uh, blurring effect okay mm -hmm. no and i think i think that's right that's also a key right because like the the point about cybersecurity, at least like the way i've always looked at it is when i walk the trade show floor on any cybersecurity trade show i see 500 different solutions and i it's really really hard for for anyone especially if like you know if i'm a furniture maker and i need to secure my network i walk around and it's like which of these 500 solutions do I need, right? And so the, the expertise to picking and choosing which ones are appropriate for my business, my infrastructure, my architecture, right? That's something that I don't think anybody should be going alone. So you're echoing that for, for sure. So, so when it comes to that, sort of what, what do you think that sort of the specific security technologies are that, that customers are gonna be gravitating towards in the next couple of years? Hmm. Well, in that part, I would say I would say that uh, we, you will see or we will see more and more artificial intelligence uh, yeah. put in, in, inside the uh, the solutions, inside the architectures. You know, prediction prediction tools. Um, you you are already uh, seeing these in the uh, uh, in the SOC designs and the implementations, you know, we did so are, so are solutions already on the market. So more and more intelligence, okay. Um, abstracting humans from the more, uh, I would say, uh, recurring tasks, uh, yeah, mundane, suggesting yeah. what's going on. Okay. So evaluating the possible threads and, and giving guidance and providing guidance. So, things like automation, orchestration, uh, we, we will see more and more uh, those parts being developed, be, being added to the different solutions to, to simplify, to anticipate uh, what's going on in the, uh, in the different uh, infrastructures, okay? That's what I would yeah. say in that, uh, that respect. No, exactly, because as we've raised complexity in the environments, the uh, uh, figuring out sort of like which things go together so you can come up you know, to, a, to a hypothesis of what the security situation really is, is gonna become harder and harder, right? Complexity drives that, right? And, and uh, these sorts of technologies, computer technologies, not just AI, computers are supposed to help us make that situation less complex. So look, Pedro, we've, we've been, this has been fantastic so far. Um, we've, we've talked about many, many topics. Is anything, Anything you'd like to cover? Any other topics you think we, we, we missed that you'd like to bring to the foreground? Well, I would say just, I would like to reinforce, uh, as I say to my customers, uh, and now coming back to the topic of our conversation, that that is now the right time to start evaluating uh, quantum safe architecture and solutions, okay? Preparing, preparing the infrastructures for the future, uh, improving resiliency, and critical data protection. Okay, that, that's what I would say yeah. as a, as a conclusion. Okay. Well, it's then the I, right in that time. case, that's I I love that conclusion. Thank you, thank you so much <laughs> uh, for uh, for being 
for being here. And I, uh, and thank, thanks for everyone for, for tuning in. Um, um, look for us again next time on Crypto Compost. Pedro, it was a, a true pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vince. Okay. <laughs>